Hi, Gay DeRusso here with the Majestic Rider. So today I wanted to talk to you about gated horses that interfere. They also call it brushing. brushing and it happens more often in the front legs than the back legs. What happens when the horse is walking, it tends to bring its legs in and it kicks itself and then you start getting sores or you might be um, when you're moving around on your horse's legs and picking its feet, you might get some blood on your hands. What's happening is that horse is kicking itself. Over time, it causes more and more trauma and cause, can cause lameness if the horse does this for a long period of time. Besides, it causes your horse pain. So why I mark it out, that's the left front. That's the sore, foot starts to sore on his leg. And that's the sore on his leg. So why does the horse kick itself? So one is its conformation and how it's built. A lot of our gated horses toe out, and that can be because they're breeding for gait and not breeding for the conformation of the horse. So if your horse tends to kick itself, look at its front legs and see if it's when it's standing still or his feet. Uh, facing forward or are they facing out? If they're facing out, then the horse toes out. Now, sometimes when the horse is standing still, he looks completely fine, but when you see him move, they'll swing the legs in like that. And that's just enough that some horses will catch themselves especially if the shoeing hasn't been uh, great and he has an unbalanced foot, uh, that can also cause the horse to um, kick itself. So we don't wanna keep causing trauma to the horse, so what can we do? So the first thing we can do is put splint boots on that horse. You want a boot that's protecting the area that the horse is actually hitting. So if you see there's a bloody area, that's the area that you wanna make sure is covered. When you're covering that area, some boots, if the horse, if that area on the horse's leg is very raw, will actually rub it more and you'll think this is not helping at all, it's just making it worse. First, you have to get that wound to heal some. So sometimes in the beginning, you might have to give that horse a week or 10 days uh, for those wounds to heal. If he's a fast healer, it might heal in four days. I wash it and clean it either with um, iodine or Hibiclens, and then once it's dried off, I usually put some Wonder Dust on it, and that seems to work for me. If, if you put something um, like a cream on it, usually the shavings and the dirt and all of that will actually stick to it and it won't stay so clean. And if you put like a wrap on it, that sometimes that wrap will rub the horse and then that won't get better. It'll actually make it worse. So that is what worked for me, just cleaning it and then putting the wonder dust on it, giving the horse time off. Then I will use a boot that won't rub the horse. That's something usually with fleece and make sure it fits that horse well. The boot has to be on there tight enough that if the horse hits the boot, the boot's not gonna spin because if the boot is spinning, that is going to pull their skin and their hair off as well. The other thing I do is I put anti-chafing around that area that's rubbed. So if anything, it will kind of um, slide but not rub it as hard and it should help to glide over the area. That anti-chafing stuff is great for saddle sores and all sorts of things just to get the chafing down. So I'll put that on every time I ride, I put on the anti-chafing um, and then I put the boot over the top and I make sure it's tight enough that the boot's not gonna move much. And then I put the boot on that horse every time I round pend it, lunge it, or I'm going to ride it. So I put it on, I just put a big lob on that part of his foot and 
here, okay. you'll see the area is small, much smaller than where you know I put them out on, but I like a lot on there um, just so it can uh, move and it won't rub any more hair off. So these are his boots. So the Velcro is going to be on the outside of his leg. And then the leather, where you can see the scratches, is on the inside because this is what protects their leg. When you put this on, it doesn't say left and right on it. The Velcro always goes towards the tail. So this is going to be his left front, and then this is going to be his right front boot. Inside of the boot, you'll see where the previous um, anti-chafing stuff is, and that can cake and, um, you know, then the fleece won't give him any cushion. So I just take my hoof pick and I just brush that area up. Okay, so now I brushed it up with the, um, the brush on the hoof pick just to make sure that all the fleece is kind of sticking up. Of course, washing them helps, but I have not done that. <laughs> I'm so busy. So of course you can wash them, you can get a second pair, uh, you can get different pairs, but until the hair grows back, I would keep fleece on them. The uh, neoprene will tend to rub if the horse has a sore there, so the fleece is much better with the anti-chafing stuff. So I place it on their leg. You don't want to pull on that tendon, so you're going to place it on, and you can, you'll know this part goes right over his area that was sore, and then pull it pretty tight, because sometimes they want to move around. Okay, so that's what the boot looks like on. Now over time, this might become bothersome for you and your shoer can help you to do some things to try uh, to help that horse not to hit himself as much. So one is to uh, make sure the toe's not too long, but also to roll the medial uh, side of the shoe. So I'm gonna show you that. Right before you go to make your shoe, you just kinda put your rocker where you want. Normal rocker between the two first and uh, the two toenails, correct? In this case, we're not doing that. We're gonna rocker it just like that on the side. And basically, completely on the side to about the center of the apex of the frog, the center of the toe, okay? Sorry. I don't know if you can see that, but um, basically, all right, guys, so we got them balanced real quick. Hey, hey. hey! I did it on the other foot, too, um, but I don't know which one's going to turn out better, so I'm probably going to send you both of them. But center toe um, past the first nail hole in the shoe. And then on these horses, on this particular horse, I don't ever use the medial toe or the medial toenail. And I just use the second and third nail hole. Sometimes the third and fourth nail hole depends on where it goes or where it lands. But leaving out that toenail helps. Okay? All right, now I'll make the shoe. My shoes are resetting, so I'm going to just burn this on show so I can show you how it is with this shoe, and then I will make you a quick, um, just a demo on the animal. Okay, so center toe to about the second nail hole, and then you rocker, center of the toe, second nail hole, and then you burn it. Make sure you keep the shoe centered where you rockered it, and where it's rockered on the shoe should burn in just the same. All right, pretty easy, okay? Okay, and also on this video, um, I'm just gonna make a shoe real quick, just show you um, how to put that rocker in. Um, real quick, I'm not going to build a whole shoe, I'm just going to show you where I start and how to rocker it, which you'll be able to fix, figure it out real quick. And I would go with one size bigger shoe than what's on the foot, because by the time you rocker it and get everything to where it wants to be, um, I've found that you <clears throat> come a little short uh, if, if you go with the size that the foot is, so it's basically like this guy's probably a one, I'm using a two hind, okay, half size. 
But there are other things out there. There's lots of farriers that have been uh, working with horses that tow out or kick themselves over many years and they may have their own answer to it. But most of the time they're doing something with that medial side of their foot. If you don't need shoes, then you might even be able to just take the shoe off because the shoe's much harder. So when a horse kicks himself with the shoe, that's gonna cause more trauma than if he was just hitting himself with his bare foot. And the other thing you can also do is, it made me think of it, is to put bell boots on your horse. If he tolerates bell boots, that would give him another, well, it'll give you two cushions. You'll have the cushion from the splint boot, but then also when the hoof comes up, if it covers that area that the shoe is, um, that would, then the boot will hit the other boot and that will give you a lot more cushion. Um, interference is also called brushing. So if your fairy says, are you talking about brushing? You can say, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Now the horses can also in the back end kick themselves and again it's usually on the inside of fetlock when you're looking at it. So in the back you'll need a longer boot, there's specific boots for the back end. Um, so you need a hind splint boot, that's what you would want to get and again I recommend if you have a lot of rubbing to get the fleece ones, they usually work best in the beginning, especially if you're in the process of getting it to heal, but you still have to ride the horse. Um, a lot of the gated horses, especially the walking horses, will cross over in the back, so sometimes they will hit. So what you can do is have your shoer watch your horse walk, walk towards away. them and then walk away, and then they can really see what that horse is doing. And with our phones nowadays, you can put many of them in slow motion so you can see exactly what part of the hoof is hitting and see if there's something they can do to help you with it. Okay, uh, hope that helps.